What's up, y'all? Welcome to the first episode of Swig Talk, where I'm going to be interviewing a bunch of different internet personalities and the like. And my first uh, special guest today is Patrick Alexander, a uh, bit of an underground content creator. So, what's up, man? Nothing much. You know, I think underground is giving me way too much credit. All right, well, I have a small list of questions that I wanted to ask, so let's see. All right, first up, what was life like for you before you started making content? Basically, I was... Broke, fat, living with my parents. I was, I was working a shitty ass job. Like, yeah, I discover you know, they're awesome. And sorry. We're sorry. Making a video game nerd. I fucking hate this game. Like, I could do that. So I scrounged money on a shitty ass camera. Had an idea that nobody thought of yet. And, uh, then I made videos. Yeah, so what kind of videos did you make? That was actually kind of the second question. What was your early content? Like, is there any old videos out there where it's like you're trying to, you know, talk about movies or something like that? Yes! Actually, they were like literal vlogs. You were the original vlogger. You, yo, did you talk about classic movies like a Garfield 2 Big City Kitty? <laughs> that was my very first video. Ever. <laughs> I think it's still up on YouTube. Oh, shit. Yo, yo, editor's note. If we find that video, show a clip of it right now. He looks like John Cleese. He acts like John Cleese. He has John Cleese's mustache. He does comic manic stylings like John Cleese. He's pretty much John Cleese, except for bushier hair. And he's Scottish. Was that, was that like your thing? Was that, were you like just reviewing movies? Like vlogging movies? Oh. Yes. Oh no, like there's a, even like a, one of my more favorite things I ever put in a video of all my video making uh, career is, I was talking about Orphan. Orphan? That movie with a little girl who killed everybody. Okay, all right. It was a, it's better than it sounds, but not very good. But I spoiled the big twist ending. Cause she's not a girl at all. She was a midget. And you remember Trapped in the Closet? <laughs> the R. Kelly song, yeah. Yes. And how one of the chapters in. Now pause the movie because what I'm about to say to y'all is so damn twisted. Not only is there a man in his cabinet, but the man is a midget. This whole movie was supposed to be like one big plug for that song or no? No. Okay. It was just a coincidence. Yes. Which I exploited. Uh, alright, so you were talking about movies, and, uh, what was, so I mean, you mentioned, uh, Channel Awesome and, uh, Angry Video Game Nerd as being, like, inspirations. Was, there, was there anybody else? Because, because eventually, and it segues into the next subject, and it's kind of like the meat of the video, uh, your series you had for a while called That Other Song, what, what, what inspired you to start doing music as, like, your, your, your gimmick? I was from a guff, Todd Shadows, full stop. Ah, <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, and then, you know, there was less competition for music. Versus nowadays where it feels like everyone on YouTube's trying to be the next music critic. Yeah, and not only that, I did, I did thought, wait a minute, a lot of one and wonders aren't technically one and wonders. I gotta always go, like, Vanilla Ice has a second hit. Just lay down and boogie and play that funky music till you die. Gerardo has a second hit. Other people had second hits. That other song, it was popular. You couldn't, uh, was it ever on YouTube or was it never? That other song, never, ever on YouTube. It was only on Blip. Because of copyright, I'm assuming, right? Yes, and money. Yeah, so tell me, because I don't really know that much about Blip. So, you made, people made more money on Blip than they could on YouTube? They could, yes. As, uh, now, obviously, I'm not a financial person. I don't know, like, the, the specifics of how much people made on Blip versus YouTube over that time. But that was really the big draw of Blip for a lot of us. I mean, besides the more lax copyright uh, enforcement, if you will. There's, yeah, is that and actually making money. 
Yeah. Versus now where it's like people, it feels like the only way to make money on YouTube is either be a, be a big name YouTube vlogger or have a Patreon. Or oh, film a dead body. You reviewed music. You kind of, the way, your style was, I remember I was talking to some of the guys about this. They described your style as being like kind of a music historian that like you'd go down the, uh, the career span of the, of the musician and then kind of like review songs as you went. What do you think was your best moment on that other song out of all your videos? Miller Vanilli, full stop. That's always going to be my number one favorite episode. Not only was it like a big milestone because that was episode 50, but I actually got like, that was pretty much the one time I became a cliched viewer with a whole shitload of cameos. I actually didn't get like a, a lot of big names. Like when I'm watching it, I, there are people I forgot I asked. I mean, I got Jaime Todd, Horror Guru, uh, Sursa Mursa, and others. And others that you can't remember now. <laughs> I mean, th not their level. I mean, I know I have uh, Rosenhacker on their Angry Ginger, or I guess Movie Venturer, my Channel Zero Bosses. Car yeah, oh, and especially like the first three. When I became like Sharkwing as my witch, comic strip critic as my music executive, and Comrade Kitty as this teenage girl. Oh, Comrade Kitty, fucking, uh, uh, I know her. Lindsay. Lindsay, yeah, I know her. She's great. She, she collaborated on one of my songs. Play it now. Wonderbolt, yeah, Wonderbolt. Huh, that is my rap in history at the Wonderbolts. Alright, so. You did that other song. How many videos did you get to? Because you said 50, so how many did you do? believe I ended it after 91 proper episodes, plus the Vanilla Ice pilot, and then I actually made two like music reviews before I actually started, because I did Meat Loaf's Object and Real View mirrors are closer than they have here because it was part of a Michael Bay collaboration and then I did a I did my fine enough I did a Michael Jackson one yeah I forget no that was for a David Fincher collaboration thingy so so it's actually funny I started the music career with David Fincher and Michael Jackson, who is it? And I ended the other song talking about Michael Jackson with "Who is it?" as the as the review. Hmm. All right. So you didn't get to 100, but you did get to around 90 or so, and then you decided to call it quits, and you ended that other song. And was all uh, as much as I, I don't know that much about Blip, but I remember it got shut down. Uh, did you uh, did you make a video about it or no? Um. I didn't make a video while Blip was going down because unlike a lot of my contemporaries, I was good enough to stay on Blip until it died. Because a lot of people just got cut like long before it was dead. So it's, so it's just like it's just like if YouTube just just decided, yo man, yo, we're YouTube, we're gonna cut the channel, we're gonna cut funding for our website, fuck it. And then, like slowly as YouTube was dying, they just started deleting random channels. Yeah, pretty much. That was, yeah, that was exactly how it happened. So, that other song ended, Blip died, it was time to go back to YouTube for a lot of people who was on Blip, I'm assuming. Uh, now we move on to the next subject, which is moving on to your next series, which lasted shortly, but it, I remember seeing a little bit of it. It's called The Rick Effect. Yeah, that was a uh, changing and morphous thing. Cause it started, cause at first I had grand plans. It was going to be a podcast every day, and then and everything I would talk. Like uh, Thursday, I would talk about wrestling with NXT. I know, like I was thinking Wednesday, I would talk about the Billboard Hot 100. A weekend, I would talk about a movie, and so on and so forth. That lasted about three days before I was like, okay, I'll talk about NXT, I'll talk about WWE pay-per-views, 
and takeovers and I'll review movies and new songs as they come in which was you know I did a couple times a week and you know whatever it's just one of those things that like the podcast thing I wasn't feeling I'm not much of a leader I need somebody and I actually did came close like uh, Muse from Muse Reviews actually expressed interest in being like a, a psychic. Oh shit, so this was gonna be, this is gonna be going off podcast 2.0. <laughs> yeah, something like that, but you know, I messaged, I saw, you know, Muse being uh, expressing interest, I saw a message, he never responded. Alright, so, what, so why'd you stop, why'd you stop Rick Effect, just kind of out of boredom? Ah, something like that, it's just one of those things that I'm not feeling it. It, it was fun to, you know, learn about podcasting, learn about that type of stuff, stuff, but I wasn't feeling the Rick Effect, at least in the podcast form. And then, like, a year or two later, I resurrected as the actual video series, just talking about wrestling and news, which I also didn't feel. I was just, like, regurgitating, regurgitating Dave Melcher the Wrestling Observer's like, I'm better than this, but I don't want. It's one of those things that I know I could do better than this. I just didn't want to. I, so I just said, screw it. I'm ending it. I don't want to do videos anymore. Alright. And last thing is, I have it written down as a possible comeback. Never. Okay. Well, that answers that. <laughs> no comeback. Alright. So literally, folks, don't call it a comeback. All right, well, that's all fine and good, man. It's your choice. You know, if, if you do want to come back at some point later on in the future, you know, like the third eventual fucking Clerks movie where everyone's going to be 60 years old and still working at the at the, at the the stop mart. No, it'd be fun. Like, I'd be like 60. I'm, I'll have a can of life. I'm back with that other song, Whippersnappers. <laughs> and the kids on YouTube, what's he talking about? Who who is this guy? This isn't this isn't a dose of Buckley. What is this? <laughs> no, it'd be like thousand kids. We didn't have our virtual goggles and our media vlogs. Or well, what future kids will be using? Dude, in the future, fucking. Videos are going to be beamed into our eye holes. That's what's going to be done. We're not even going to have to look at computer monitors. We're going to have videos just beamed into our skulls. That, that's probably the future, like, legit. Well, uh, th that's basically all the questions I wanted to ask. And uh, if you want to find Pat currently, uh, you can find him occasionally... Uh, well, actually, you've appeared in almost every episode on the Stress Room Podcast, which I did the theme song for. And if you want to check out Stress Room Podcast, link in description. Uh, yeah. So... Uh, that's that's all. You got anything else before we sign off, man? Hmm. Nah. There's a lot of things I could say, but I don't. I don't think I got the time. All right. Well then, this is the first episode of Swig Talk. Thank you all for checking out, and uh, ne tune in next time. We have another new uh, internet guest. Look forward to that next month. Hopefully, we can make this like a monthly thing. Until then, M Swigger out, y'all. Ruckus knuckles for life. Peace. So he's a